Hi, my name is Stormy, and I wanted to invite you along in light of the recent elbow injury. I am doing my Bible study a little bit differently, and I'm continuing on with Luke 19 from my last video. So it says, as he rode along, uh, which just as a reminder, he, Jesus, he, I was traveling from Bethany to Jerusalem, and uh, this is getting ready to lead into the uh, Palm Sunday triumphal entry, and uh, and he's, you know, that's what this is talking about. Uh, so it says, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. So I'm um, the crowds, there are lots of people there. So I'm thinking, like, where did they come from? Uh, it's, you know, Passover week, it's Holy Week in Jerusalem. So there were lots and lots of people there. They spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. Okay, so I'm thinking they saw him coming. People were hearing about this. This was a big deal. I mean, obviously, town gossip. Everybody knew he was in town. Uh, so they were, you know, preparing ahead of time uh, so that they could make this a big celebration. Um, they spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. Ugh, nasty. Okay, but this garment that they're referring to, um, it was the overcoat that they wore, you know, on top of everything else. So in surrendering this, this was a really big deal and I'll explain more later. Um, so obviously there was a lot of group work happening if they were laying these coats along the road. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering how long was this road? Uh, so naturally I Google it and uh, you can tell um, I had a typo there. Uh, how long to walk from Bethany to Jerusalem? So it was about 1.72 miles, according to their measuring at that point in time, which was called Stradia, I believe. Perhaps I am mispronouncing that. But anyway, 1.72 miles worth of coats spread out on the ground. Um, this was a huge personal sacrifice. and. There's biblical reference to this coat and the legal rights, like I mentioned before. I know this is somewhere in Matthew, so I'm looking up this passage right here, speeding it up a little bit so that you can see Matthew chapter 5, where Jesus talks about turning the other cheek. The later part of this passage, it says, if you are sued in court and your shirt is taken from you, give your coat also. Uh, there was a law back then saying that a person could sue you for basically everything but your coat. Um, it, it was like a human right for you to have covering from the weather. So I wanted to look up a little more. So I went to BibleREF.com. It has some great references. So it's talking about how Jesus is talking about a, a court situation where they would sue them for literally the shirt off their back. But Jesus is saying, instead of fighting them in court, go ahead and give them the thing that even the law says they cannot take, which is that overcoat. So moving on with this passage, it says, when he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all of the wonderful miracles they had seen. So all of that tells us that there were a lot of people there. there they were very loud. Uh, they were drawing attention to themselves they were specifically singing and shouting about the wonderful miracles. So if by chance you were in Jerusalem to celebrate Holy Week, which is one of the three yearly gatherings that Jews attended, um, you know, people would travel for a very, very long way to come to these special occasions. So if you were there and you didn't already know about Jesus, now you know. Um, and you know specific things that he has done. And not only that, but now people from all over the world, nations, because Jews were not only located in Israel, they were spread out all over the world. So there were Jews from all over the world who now know about what Jesus is doing. What were they singing and shouting specifically? Blessing on the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. And uh, I know that there's a couple of things here that come from prophecy. So I looked those up. Zechariah 9 actually talks about um, just a couple of things before that. Uh, and as you can see here, I'm making a note that it was fulfilled in Luke 19. And uh, this is talking specifically about Messiah. So uh, the people in Jerusalem would have memorized and had access to this information. So rejoice, O people of Zion. Uh, Zion is 
specifically a reference to the holy city, Jerusalem. And it says, shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. So this passage here is why we call it the triumphant entry. Triumphant entry comes from that shout in triumph. So it says, look, look, your king is coming to you, which is also indicative of Bethany to Jerusalem. It's talking about the king coming into the city. And I love this part right here. It says, he is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble. So a lot of times when they would talk about a king, they would also describe him by his character. Uh, this was a description that they had also given to King David uh, in a couple of occasions. But um, also King David was a really good example to us of who Messiah would be. Uh, of course, he was human and made mistakes, but... Um, King David was a previous example to the Jews as to what to expect. And he also provided a lot of the prophecy leading up to Jesus. So um, here I want to switch colors right quick because look at this, riding on a donkey. So uh, all of that business about riding on a donkey on a donkey's colt, um, a donkey's colt would have been untrained. Jesus sent them specifically into town to get an untrained colt. Uh, so that passage above there where Jesus sent them into town, that's a reference to Zechariah 9.9. And then I also wanted to look up specifically where it is prophesied that they would say those specific words, praising God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So in Googling this, I found that it's also referenced in Matthew 23, but the original prophecy comes from one of David's writings in Psalm and it says blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord we bless you from the house of the Lord in Psalm 118 and here I just always like writing where I find the fulfillment of that and I saved that for later reference heading back to our passage now I'm going to go ahead and write that down I do this in my paper Bible as well so that anytime I'm reading through it's really easy for me to go back and see where I found that prophecy fulfilled. Moving on, but, but is always an important word. Some of the Pharisees, some, who? But not all, some of the Pharisees among the crowd. Okay, so haters gonna hate, to quote Taylor Swift, um, these haters were hanging out already. They were already there trying to see what was going on. Um, it seems like your enemies always wanna see what you're doing because they're jealous. Uh, so, but they acknowledged him. They call him teacher. Um, this acknowledgement is interesting because they're acknowledging his authority and his expertise, um, which is pretty significant because even though he is their enemy, they are still showing their respect to him and uh, inadvertently admitting here that, you know, that he's the real deal, even if they don't want to submit to that. They tell him to rebuke his followers. Okay, so rebuke, English doesn't really do this word justice. Uh, rebuke is super, super harsh. But Jesus tells them if they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. I'm thinking this might be prophecy again, so I'm going to go looking for it. So what do I do? I start Googling. And I look it up. And I find it, I go to esv.org, that is a great reference place as well. And here along the top, you can see, um, it shows me, you know, where the passage is itself, but also there at the top, you can see all of the places where this prophecy is listed or mentioned. I'm going to go to Habakkuk 2, 11, because that was the actual first prophecy. And as you can see here, I wrote, you know, Habakkuk 2.11 points to Luke 19, and it says, The very stones in the walls cry out against you, and the beams in the ceilings echo the complaint. So I'm like, what is that about? What is going on here? What is Habakkuk talking about? So I read through all of it, and basically, uh, God is rebuking Israel because they have a love of money. Uh, to the point where it has become their idol. 
And I think it's interesting that Jesus uses this passage in reference to the Pharisees because they would have known what this meant. Uh, Thank you so much for coming along on this journey with me and let me know if you want to hear more.